So this is a PHT supply, high voltage supply. I wouldn't advise um, getting the kids to touch this. Get, either get the technicians or yourself to set it up. It's uh, 50,000 volts, yeah? So, and you have to ground one of the terminals. And uh, what grounding is, is just connecting a, a wire to the ground terminal, which passes the uh, current to the earth. Um, but yeah, so that's a very high voltage supply, and your school should have one. Should have one. If they don't, this, this, these evaporators won't be able to use. Um, so yeah, so this is the supply. You first, it's got a 6.3 voltage um, output, which will power a steel filament lamp. Um, and that is the start of how I introduced this to kids. I would say this is to get them excited. Is have you heard of an electron gun? You know, and because obviously all the boys will say, "Oh yeah, you know, guns are cool, whatever." Um, but you can say, "Well, I bought an electron gun, and this is an electron gun." You know, or if they're slightly older, you talk about particle accelerators. You know, if they know about the LHC or anything like that, you can say, "Well, look, I brought a particle accelerator into school, or this is this one school has." So this is essentially a mini particle accelerator, and we need um, this high voltage supply to accelerate. The electrons. So what we have is a small um, lamp which is only powered by 6.3 volts. So that's connected to this terminal. Then next, that's going to act as the cathode. Cathode chemist, Zara, is negative or positive? What do you remember? What do you remember from the chemistry lesson? Positive. Anybody can help her out. Thank you. Yeah, well done. So you should, whoever your chemistry <laughs> teacher, they're doing a terrible job, but. <laughs> but it's that confusion between the cathode being the trapped and cations. Oh, right, okay, yeah. yeah. I don't have to sit down and write it down. Everyone are all cathodes, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. the metal cation is positive. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So there's an okay. easy confusion between the word cathode oh, sure. and cation. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Right, no worries. Okay, so the lamp is going to act as our negative cathode. Okay, and there's, uh, there's going to be a process called thermionic emission, which is where electrons on the surface of the filament get so hot that they actually leave the surface. Okay? Um, so that's the process. The lamp is going to be negatively charged. Then on this end, what we have is the anode, which is, if it's not negative, somebody else. Well done. Okay, so it'll be positive. Okay? And I'm going to pass around these two magnets. Um, as you touch the magnets, or obviously, um, or turn them around and see when they attract each other and when they uh, repel each other, okay? And obviously, all of you will visually see the attraction and the, re the, the repelling of the magnets, okay? And you will obviously feel that repulsion or the attraction. And that only occurs when, the or they're, when they're um, placed at certain orientations, okay? We can visually see that as students, as humans. However, you are taught in your chemistry and in your physics lessons that atoms look like this. Okay? They've got three particles. We've got neutrons and protons at the center. Now we've got electrons on the outside. Yeah? No human, unless you've invented a, a, a machine that can shrink you, no human has actually seen this. Yeah? This is obviously by inference, by different experiments. So what, what this demonstration will try and help you, um, what well, I want to get across is that electrons, in the, in the same way that the magnets can attract and repel, electrons behave the same way. Okay? This is a diagram we show you. We, we tell you electrons are on the outside and they're attracted to the positive protons. That's how the atom is held together. Yeah, but none of us have seen that. So we're going to prove, this demonstration is going to prove to us that electrons can move from a positive end, sort of from a negative end to a positive end, or that they can get attracted or they can get repelled. Okay? So you've all seen that magnets can either repel or attract each other. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this thing on. So just to recap, we've got a, a filament that's going to act as a cathode. Electrons are going to be um, fermionically emitted. They're going to leave the surface. They're going to get attracted to the positive end, the anode. Okay, this is connected to the positive terminal, and then what we have is a mini electron gun. There's actually a hole in the, um, the anode where the electrons can go through, 
And this is a fluorescent screen which lights up when electrons pass through it. Okay, and I'm going to prove to you it's not a laser, because I'm going to do something interesting. So let's see what happens uh, when we turn this thing on. We see a blue light. Okay. So at this point, students are going to say, oh, that's just a laser, sir. You know, that's not interesting, that's not an electron. But how can we prove that they are electrons? Well, in that diagram I showed you, electrons are negatively charged. We will tell you they're negatively charged. And protons are positively charged. So, first thing I'm going to do to prove to you that electrons can repel each other in the same way that magnets can repel each other when two poles are together. What I'm going to do now is, this wire is connected to the negative end of this power supply. Okay? I'm going to connect this end to that terminal. If I've told you um, that light charges repel, what do you think is going to happen to that beam of that one? What do you think it's going to be pushed away? Yeah, pushed away, away. Yeah. okay? So, what, what I say, you've all visually seen that magnets can repel each other, okay? Well, let's see now if we can prove that electrons also behave in a similar manner. And if they get repelled, so we're going to attach this negative end. We've got negative electrons going that direction, we've seen that. They, because they've been attracted towards the positive end. But let's see what happens now. Let's see if the prediction is right. Deflects downwards. Okay? Let's see what happens when we do the opposite. Put it down uh, the opposite on the bottom terminal. Do we think it can deflect upwards? Let's find out. It deflects upwards. Okay? So, that cannot be a laser because lasers do not change direction like that. Okay? And, and I just think this is a nice demonstration to teach the kids to prove that electrons repel each other. Um, well, you, you see, um, it's quite difficult to get across to them that they are particles because this appears to them like they're just like, it's like a line. You know, just a, just a beam. But if you, if you can get across that there are loads of them, hence that's why we've got high uh, voltage, which emits uh, loads and loads of electrons off the filament surface, and that's what we get that to be. If at GTSC you will not come across, uh, depending on your syllabus, unless they're doing triple science, they may not come across electromagnetism or electromagnetic induction. But if you're teaching, it definitely does come in A-level physics, but if, if um, you are teaching the triple science group, you can do something like this, which is proving that electromagnetism, electricity and magnetism are linked. So if you're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, right, the, the words electromagnetism are in, in, in that phrase, electromagnetic spectrum. You can ask the kids why is the electromagnetic spectrum named that, okay? And you can prove to them that magnetism and electricity are linked by this demonstration as well. If I just get rid of this, this terminal. So we're back to a single flow of electrons. We've got a uh, collection of magnets here. Let's see what happens as I bring the magnets close. So you see the, mag the magnetic field interfering or somehow affecting the electrons, yeah? So if I do, does the opposite, yeah? So, you know, it's a bit like Star Wars, you can say, oh, I've got the force, you know, the force is strong in me, whatever, or get a kid or something. But that, that's a nice way to demonstrate that electricity and magnetism are linked, yeah? And if you're teaching the EM spectrum, you can bring that. So this, obviously, you can bring a lot of topics into when you demo this. You know, you talk about the electron, you talk about electricity and magnetism, Magnetism, um, yeah. about televisions, particle accelerators, this comes into triple science as well. So, have you got any questions? It, right, so that's just a beam of electrons. Yeah. If a like light, a photon of light, yeah. is essentially a bundle of electrons, isn't it? Is that right? A bundle of photons. A bundle of photons, yeah. but isn't a photon like an electron? Um, similar, similar. Yeah. So why does the same thing happen when with with, with a photon of light? 
You mean with uh, magnets? Yeah. Um, yeah, for the electromagnetic spectrum, it's uh, you no know, visible light is part of it. Yeah, and obviously photons do make up the entire spectrum. Um, and yeah, it, it will interact in a similar way. Oh, it, oh, it will. It will. Oh, right, okay. But, but um, photons aren't charged, electrons are, they're negatively charged. So photons aren't charged, they aren't charged. Right, okay, but I thought they were, so if you don't know, right, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, yeah. But that's going, that's going on to A level physics. Any, <laughs> any more questions on, on that? And you could also bring uh, up the television, the old fashioned televisions. Um, obviously, the kids probably won't know about them, but that's how the old fashioned televisions worked as well. Uh, and they would have three different types of fluorescent screens uh, red, green, blue, blue again, and obviously the combination of them to get your picture on, on your old fashioned television screen. So yeah, so obviously the fluorescent screen bit is also a bit of chemistry. Um, what well, yeah, well, would you do this? Would you do the electron? Yeah, as I said, the, yeah, as I said, the, there are so you can like if I was teaching the structure of the atom and if that was my lesson and I wanted to prove to them that electrons are attracted or they can be repelled, then I would just teach them that. However, if you were doing the EM spectrum, you could also but obviously, I, I included a whole bunch of topics in it. If I was going to do a lesson with kids, I wouldn't include all that. I would just pick one specific area. Yeah.